What's going on at the internet? Selfish here with Retrospect. Today we're going to take a look at what is definitely becoming one of the best values in retro gaming, and that is the TrimUI Smart Pro. But it's not just the TrimUI Smart Pro, it is with the new Crossmix OS. We have a new version of that OS out, and it is everything that we hoped it would be, and a little bit more. And we're going to take a deep dive into that OS today just to see what it has to offer. Let's take a look. <laughs> Though the device inside has stayed relatively the same, actually almost exactly the same, the box is new, so I thought we'd do a quick unboxing here real quick. They do list all three colors on here now, which initially there was just a picture of one device on the front. They also have some of the, the specs on here, which were not on here before. So kind of a neat little thing. And there is a special little secret about this box. And that special little secret, if we can get it open, is this 128 gig SD card. It's a SanDisk SD card. This whole thing comes courtesy of our friends over at Mac DIY. I was in the middle of making a do-it-yourself video on how to install Crossmix OS when Mac DIY reached out to me, and then I started thinking, what is the simplest way to install Crossmix OS? And that's just to get the TrimUI already with Crossmix OS on it. So I just want to give a shout out to our friends over at Mac DIY again for sending this over to me so that I can review it for you. Also, if you use the link down on my Thingma Bob and go over to Mac DIY and pick this up, you can use code Jim16 and you can save 16% off this bad boy. And why is it code Jim16? Maybe my name is Jimmy. It's not, but it could be. But I have no idea why, and anything that gives me 16% off, I don't really care. I'm gonna use it. So here we go through this unboxing experience. Again, they do send it to you on a sand disk. This is Crossmix OS preloaded, 128 gigs. They have a very curated list on here as well. They did a very good job with this card, I do believe, and we will take a look at that as we go along here. With the Trimmy Eye Smart Pro, you don't exactly get an origami accordion, but you do get a piece of paper which you could make an origami accordion out of if you wanted to I don't feel like bending it more than it already is though you can see where the card was sitting on there all right everything else here is pretty much the same so I'm not gonna waste a ton of your time here we do have a charging cable it is USB-C and then we do have the handheld itself. This time I decided I was gonna try a black one out. I was really worried that these were gonna get fingerprinted, which is why I never ordered black the first time. I've seen enough videos, people have done enough reviews on these now, and I'm pretty confident that this does not get oily and full of prints. I did use this for a little bit. I just put it back in the box to kind of show you the box, but uh, it hasn't showed any prints or anything like that yet. Let's get this stuff out of the way. This will maybe be the second or third time on the channel that I'm gonna tell you, don't throw the card away. Being that it's a good card, name brand card, SanDisk makes great cards. Those are usually one of the brands we tell you to buy. Obviously, I'm not going to tell you to throw this away. We are, however, going to get rid of this. Let's listen. I don't know if you could hear that, but it was really satisfying for me. So if you couldn't, I apologize. So here we do have our TrimUI Smart Pro. This device is pretty cool. Uh, nothing has really changed except for these trigger buttons are different. So I have noticed uh, my original release one, which is this one here, finally is almost to this point where the trigger buttons are very similar. But initially when I had gotten it, you could not pull these trigger buttons down to save your life. This new one here works the way that you would expect it to out of the box. Also your upper triggers are working fine. So your L1s are fine, which L1 and R1 were fine before, but L2 and R2 are now great. You still do not have the ability to click on your joysticks. Uh, and these are, I think, straight out of a Vita joysticks. Never been my favorite joysticks out there, but for a handheld like this, they work. I'm pretty sure they are just a one-for-one -one swap knockoff Vita joystick. A lot of Vita parts do get used in retro handheld. We do still have our function button on here, which I think that the FN should be on, not off. I don't know what it stands for though, so not for me. I will turn the screen up here for you just a second. All right, so we'll hit up the old poker cam here just so you can kind of see what I'm going through here. But we do have our different lists that are already pre-curated on here. So they do have a free games collection list, some best of ROMs in different free game collections that they could be on here. And these are just just out of different systems that are on here. So kind of a neat little way to do it if you don't want to go through the ROMs library. Then you do have your Mario collection, which is probably one of the coolest. It goes through all the Mario games on here. Now, as you've seen recently, they've kind of eliminated Mario games from a lot of these handhelds just because of Nintendo's rampage they're going on these days. Mech DIY said, hold my beer. We're gonna actually just curate them so that if Nintendo wants to check out what we got going on, they can see every game right up front. I'm sure that's not what happened, but it is pretty cool. Even in arcade, you do have access to Donkey Kong and, the, and whatever arcade games there have been for Mario, but each system you go through, you can find the different Mario games curated for that system. I really like that. Another one that they decided to curate for this is Sonic. So we have a Sonic curation, same kind of thing, every system, as well as the Ninja Turtles. And then again, back to Nintendo, 
we also have all of the Zelda games curated per system, which is pretty freaking awesome, to be honest. I did notice that they're not doing the remakes on here. Uh, they might have some remakes on here, but when it's curated per system, it, it looks like it's the original game on the original system, which I think is the best way to do it when you're doing a list like that. Then you have a best of vertical, which is in the original software. It's just called the vertical file, I believe, but it makes a game that you will put in and it'll play in Tante mode. So you'll be playing in this direction automatically when you go into it, which is pretty Pretty darn cool. We probably won't touch much more on that. It is in my original review video for this device. If you go back and look at that, I will link that down on my thing with Bob as well. All right, now once we get out of the collections, we're gonna go into our emulators. So this supports a lot more emulators now. And one thing that's cool about Crossmix is that they added some more standalone emulators to it as well. So you're not gonna see them maybe by system, but you will see them by name when you go into the systems. So more systems than just PSP are using standalone emulators outside of RetroArch now, or do have the option to do that which is really neat. If you hit your menu button when you're in here, you'll be able to search through the games if that's what you're looking for. Um, you can also edit the screen. I believe if you hold select for a while, I guess you just have to touch it. Also goes in the search and then is it start that you hold? Oh yeah, there we go. So in the original software, it does the same thing. So then it just makes them all go in like a Nintendo Switch style if you wanna look for your systems that way. We should be able to hold it again for a couple seconds and it should flip back for us, I believe. Yep, so you'll be able to see your systems this way. Now we are gonna also get support here for Pico 8 with Splore. And if you're not unfamiliar, Splore is the explorer that you use in Pico in order to go look for new games. And then you also are gonna get ports on here, which is pretty flippin' awesome. So under P here, PP, we have port. The Trimiori Smart Pro on its own does have support now for Portmaster uh, through Crossmix. And then I know it's a gray area, but if you're into it, there is a curated list of ports that are already on this device. Keep in mind, uh, people are getting a little huffy about Portmaster and putting ports on. A lot of the ports that are getting pre-put on these devices, including this one, are free to play games anyways. So they're free to play through Portmaster. This offers over 200 ports that are free to play and then 180, you need to add your own game files. They've loaded a lot of the ones that are free to play on here already through this specific memory card, which is pretty fantastic. So you can go in and play any of those games that they've already pre-loaded for you. And you do have the option, again, to use your files to get any of the other 180 games that are available through Portmaster. Ports tend to look a little bit better than emulated games. And the reason being is they're not being emulated. They're being played natively on the device, so it's built into the Portmaster software. You're installing a bunch of files, you're just adding your additional files that show that you own the game, but you're no longer emulating it. You're actually playing it specifically for software, so it's like it's being made to be played on that software. You will find times where the joysticks might not want to work or something like that because the original game didn't have those. So just something to think about. And if it is a point and click, you will have to use uh, one of your joysticks as a mouse typically. But that's kind of just the little nitty gritties of it. But for the most part, if you're not into ports yet in retro gaming, it is the way to go. The Portmaster team is killing it. And those are available here for sure. Thanks to the ports team, you do have more systems on Crossmix than you did on the original OS. But there were a few shortcomings on the original OS that I had talked about in my first video. And that's when this handheld was twice as much money and didn't come with any games and had really terrible, terrible L2 and, and R2 buttons on it. Now I did create a list that's about four pages long of things I wanted to talk about. So we're just gonna highlight a few of them. Under the emulation side of this, you now have auto load and save states. Also resume on boot. So if you do power this device off and you're in the middle of a game, powering it back up will put you right back in the same spot, back in the game, back in the action much faster. That makes this a better handheld than it used to be. I'll give you an example from my life that I use all the time, but picking the kids up and all of a sudden it's your turn and they say, all right, it's your turn. Well, you just power it down. Next time you power it back up, you're going to be in the same spot. So anytime that you just need to quickly just turn it off and move on with life for a while and you want to get back in that spot, you don't have to wait and try to go through and try to figure out how to get back in there again. Already taken care of. You can change any of the overlays in any of the game sections now and you can use your own overlays if you want or you can import different overlays, which is a little bit nicer than what was set up before. Before you only had the option to use the Trim UI Smart overlays. That literally, I'll say Trim UI Smart on them. I actually kind of like those. I got used to them after a while, but you don't have to use those. You can use your own. And then there is a built-in analog detector in Crossmix. So if you're going to play PlayStation, if the game allows for analog, it will automatically detect that you have analog on here, which is something that none of these operating systems really have. You'll find a lot of times when you go into play PlayStation that the analogs are either attached to the D-pad or they just don't work at all. With Crossmix, if you go into a game that allows analog, it will look to see if you have analog sticks and it will automatically enable those analog sticks for you. So they'll work. Really cool thing that's kind of built in. So we kind of touched a little bit on emulators. The best of section. Now we 
can go into apps. There's a ton of apps on here. Some things that are underneath the the funky, the F N K Y funky, which is the F N key down here. A couple additions to what was available in Tomato OS here on Crossmix. We have your LEDs, so you can turn your LEDs off by flipping the switch. You can go to quiet mode or silent mode, so it's not completely quiet, but it is silent. You can go to CPU power save, so you can have it be a save mode, or as myself and I think every other creator and or person who uses this uses it for is performance, and that'll overclock your CPU to give you more performance for your games. It does chisel away at battery life a little bit, but the battery life in this thing is pretty good, so you probably won't notice. And then as well as you can add any of your turbo keys, and you can add multiple of these at once and use it that way. So like if I wanted it to go into turbo mode and turn off my LEDs, for instance, so when I'd be on this main screen here, if I wanted to overclock and, and turn off my LEDs, for instance, I could just overclock and then my LEDs also come off, which makes me know that it's overclocking. In this particular handheld, I do like having the LEDs on. You will have some options for LEDs too, and we'll go through that in a minute. You do have the ability to do moonlight game streaming. Somebody asked me about the picture I posted of this while I was doing some testing the other day, because I posted a picture of me playing Cyberpunk 2077. That was just me playing off of my computer through moonlight go, uh, game streaming in big picture mode on here. So it acts just like my Steam Deck. You do have the ability now to do over the air updates, and that's, I believe, sort of part of 1.2 on Crossmix and, and beyond. But the newest version does have OTA updates, so that'll be something very convenient going forward, something no manufacturer has seemed to be able to figure out up until this point. If you do USB storage mode on here, you can now just plug this into your computer and it will recognize your SD card without having to take your SD card out, which is really nice because you can just drop and drag that way as if you have your SD card plugged in. You are able to put your own boot logos on here, obviously instant access to RetroArch, and you can do this, what's called the Emu Cleaner. This is kind of neat because if you have systems that are showing up folders on here, but you have nothing in them because they do put a placeholder text file in there just to hold the folder open, you can just go and clean those all up so that those won't show up so you're not going to see your empty folders when you get to that point. I don't think I need to explain the file manager, but if you are a streamer, the screen recorder does work pretty well on here. You actually are able to record your gameplay. I have a pain to convert it and get it off of here if you want to upload that later, but you do have the ability to do that. Your randomizer obviously will give you random stuff. We already talked about Portmaster, and then the one thing I do want to discuss is this is not the only settings that's in here. It gets a little confusing because you have settings here, and then you have settings under settings. You have another settings key in the same spot even, but settings here in your apps folder actually gives you the ability to go through your settings for all the different things that are now built into Crossmix. If you want to do changes with your emulators, if you want to change how your LEDs work, like mine are set up for ambient, that means that they're going to try to closely mimic some of the colors that are already on the screen. You can have it so that each system has its own, which is the default for this, is every system has their own color, stuff like that. You can go in here and make any kind of network changes or settings that you need to do. Also, there's a list of network things you can do now, as far as server-wise, and you can see them kind of listed here. I am holding this at a bad angle for even that camera aren't I? I was holding it for the top one for some reason, so we'll, sorry about that, we'll kind of reset here, but use the poker cam, but you do have a list of different things that you can do here as far as Telenet and HTTP servers and things like that where you're able to transfer files back and forth between this device and or other devices. So a lot of that is available now and you do have a display IP option if you need to be able to see your IP address in order to put it into a web browser field or anything like that. So we'll go back a page here. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. So we'll go back a page here. So that's under your network. Under your theme, you can change anything, including just keep the icons from one theme and then change the background things and the music for another theme. You can mix and match and create your own themes inside of this. It is kind of like a theme tool. So it's kind of neat how that all works. It'll be here under your advanced sections where you can kind of set everything you wish to set to make your own theme. Under the tools down here, this is where you're able to overclock your CPU, set your max CPU. You can clean up dot files, which is like if you use a Mac, you'll get these dot files or the they're kind of like a hidden file too, but it's a dot file format. You can get rid of that file format file. You don't need it. And for some reason, just randomly add it sometimes. You can clean all those out of your library. Sort your favorites and then get into your partition for your disk. You will have six gigs of available memory still left on here when you are downloading Crossmix. If you are feeling like a professional, and honestly, you don't want to screw this up. So if you're not comfortable or don't know what you're doing, don't do it. But you will have access to those six gigs of EMC storage. So you could use those for loading new applications and doing testing. Just be aware that that is the internal storage on the device. And if you corrupt that, the entire device will be corrupted. And here is that again, that UI. So you can change how your best of folders and things like that work. Also, what loads up initially when you start the device. So that'll be available through that as well. We'll get out of here. You do have your screen scraper. This will go through and download all all your artwork for all your files. One thing about getting this handheld with this pre-curated memory card on it is this, the curation on here actually has already been scraped and has the image files for each of the ROM sets on it. So you can see the box art already, which is phenomenal. It takes me hours to do that every time I get a new handheld, which 
I'm running Screen Scraper for one right now on my desktop. I'm literally, I feel like every day running Screen Scraper and it takes hours sometimes to do. And lately it's just been because a lot of the, these new operating systems, they don't have folders in the same spot. So it's, um, it's really difficult just to use the files I already have. So to make it less difficult, I've just been scraping them, but it's very time consuming. All right, we'll move on from that and then we will go. So NetPlay would be if you want to hook two devices together. Like I could hook these two together and I would be able to be able to play a game through the NetPlay settings. And then we go into our actual settings for the handheld. Now these have gone relatively unchanged. So you're still gonna have your normal Wi-Fi settings, your display settings like I did, turned up the screen a little bit. I realized now I didn't need to do that. I was looking at the wrong camera when I did it, but it's not washing out. So I think it's gonna be fine. You have access to Bluetooth audio on this handheld, which is very, very, rare for a retro handheld to offer a Bluetooth audio option. There is one here. Again, this is the original theme creator or theme selector. I would go and use the one under the apps folder. That's going to give you the most leeway. You can remap your keys, use this as a hotspot, which is kind of odd because that means you're getting internet through Wi-Fi and then offering Wi-Fi, something I've never understood. But then we can go back into our traditional settings. Here you're going to see your, your power off, which now you can just hold the power button for about three seconds and a power box will pop up, ask if you want to power it down or not. So you don't actually need to come back to this menu to do that, which is really nice because you used to have to do that. This is where you turn on your net play, you refresh your ROMs. If you add a bunch of new ROMs to your device, you're gonna wanna refresh them, time date, all that kind of stuff. So pretty much the same basic stuff you'd see in a settings folder for your cell phone, uh, maybe minus the calibrate your joysticks. That is something you are able to do in here. And that's just gonna be going through and calibrating your joysticks, making sure that they're working correctly. I already calibrated these, so they're doing just fine. We don't get a really bad, bad Cardinal snap like we do on an Ambernick device, but she's, she gets a little snappy sometimes, but uh, much better, especially for a Vita stick, it does pretty well. I think the only thing that I forgot to mention is that in Swan Station now, uh, there is a 16 by nine mode launcher, so it will actually look the way it's supposed to. Uh, before it was kind of uh, muddying the picture a lot. Uh, so now it will actually automatically uh, have a mode switcher for 16 by nine that's actually set up to be used for this particular handheld. So that is kind of a lifesaver in some instances, not always, but in a lot of instances, it definitely will help. There are some things I obviously am not mentioning, but there, that, that's the base for the things that I think somebody might want to use in the new things again the file transfer stuff is really cool i know i didn't get real in depth in that but we don't want this video to be a, a million years long either now i'll go into a little bit of gameplay i'm going to show you just a couple of games real quick and then we'll kind of move on from there What do you think? Do you think they did a good job with Crossmix OS and then also curating a good library for this handheld and making sure things were set up correctly with Crossmix OS? I personally think this is one of the best lists that I've ever had before. Like I said at the beginning, I tell people to throw their memory cards away every time you get a new handheld. Granted, not if you get a SanDisk card or, you know, one of the better ones, you don't necessarily need to throw it away, but 128 gig SanDisk card is worth, you know, as much as the device most of the time. So that, uh, that's really a big positive for me. But let me know down in the comment section, do you have a Trimui Smart Pro? Are you using Crossmix OS yet? And what do you and don't you like about it? There's a couple things that are a little tweaky here and there, but for the most part, 
I really don't have any complaints about CrossMix. When this device came out, I said, this has potential, but it was way too expensive at the time. And I said, but I said it had potential if the price came down and people actually put some time into it, that this could be an amazing device. And lo and behold, people put some time into it and the price has come down and this thing is an amazing device. So I have no complaints about that whatsoever. I think that this thing is pretty awesome and I can't wait to see what else comes out for this in the future. I am putting together a video right now with CrossMix on how to add YouTube to this. There is an ability to add YouTube to this, but I didn't want to tutorial this up too much. So in my next video on the Trimui Smart Pro, we are going to talk about adding YouTube to this device. You can use it as a media player for YouTube as well. And like I had said, there's a lot of other things I really like about this. There's a few things that are a little quirky with CrossMix OS, but nothing that really raises an alarm like we see in a lot of devices. And since this review is more about the operating system than it is about the device itself, I think that's where I'm going to leave it. If you want to know how I feel about this device or any of the quirky things I feel maybe could get updated or changed on this handheld, take a look at one of my other videos. I do go over that in pretty good depth on a couple of different videos on the Trimu iSmart Pro, so I don't want to be a dead horse here. But that's all I got for today. Don't forget, every time you like a video on this channel, a new handheld is born. Share this video with your friends, and if you liked what you saw here, do me a favor and subscribe. Just like sharing, that helps the channel grow, and the more we grow, the more I get to show. I think it's a win-win for somebody. I'm not sure if it's you or me, or maybe neither of us. Somebody's gonna win in that situation because the more growing, the more showing. And speaking of growing and showing, there's a couple videos up here on the screen for you that YouTube says you're gonna like. So go on over and check one of those out if you haven't seen it already. And if you have seen it already, you probably missed something the first time because I talk kind of fast. So you might wanna go watch it again just to make sure that you get all the information. And then I feel like everybody wins yet again. See, lots of winning for everybody. But that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.